How do you measure the contributions and the sacrifice of this country's greatest generation? And how do you recognize or put a value on those contributions half a century or more later? Tonight, we hope to put a face to some of our state's mid-century visionaries and businessmen who dreamed big, worked hard, and solved many of the most pressing problems of their time, and as a result, transformed a rural southern state into one with a bright future. The GI Bill, including college benefits, was an important building block for a vibrant middle class, and vets attended college in record numbers. They also took advantage of the abundant and diverse opportunities following World War II. Their generation built ever taller skyscrapers and filled the suburbs. They discovered DNA and made the honeymooners must see TV. They refined the computer mainframe that they would rely on to send the first men to the moon. In 1956, President Dwight Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Highway Act. This bill created a 41,000 mile national system of interstate and defense highways. Today we just call it the Interstate Highway System, and as the Transcontinental Railroad had done a century earlier, the wider, smoother, faster, uninterrupted highways opened up new stretches of the country. Construction of longer, high-capacity roads and bridges in Arkansas required bigger thinkers and bigger equipment. Road crews needed more than buckets of hot asphalt and mops. Instead, road building quickly evolved into hot mix plants, more complicated designs and engineering specs, and large dump trucks and pavers. Whether designing roads or driving a truck heavy with aggregate, everyone felt they had an important part to play. These guys built the highway construction industry as it exists today. Their work had far-reaching consequences and served as an economic engine. Farmers used their roads to move produce like lumber, corn, and chicken to the market. And it's how families travel to and through the state to marvel at its natural beauty, bringing millions of tourist dollars with them each year. As the industry grew ever more complicated, whether in design or construction, and as state and federal regulations multiplied, changed and changed again, those working in the trenches decided it needed a united voice, one that would be respected at the state level, but heard all the way up to Capitol Hill in Washington. It wasn't about getting their way. These savvy businessmen, including those we honor here tonight, fought to protect the industry as well as create new job opportunities while doing it safely. Out of this need, the Arkansas Asphalt Pavement Association was born in 2000. Tonight we recognize five industry leaders. Matthew Knight Cashin, Sam Remy Clark, Sr., Howard House, John Paul McConnell, and Bob Smith. These gentlemen built companies and highways that branched out to every point in Arkansas, and their reach continues to be felt today. It is with great respect for their dedication to their life work, their families, and the state of Arkansas that tonight we induct the first class into the Arkansas Asphalt Pavement Association Hall of Fame.